Hey guys, how you doing? Ray here again. If you'd like to subscribe, it's Nitro Kyosho. Uh, remember to follow me on Facebook. I have a community page, Nitro Kyosho. All one word brings you there. Got pictures, videos, and all kinds of cool stuff there. So, uh, it is good, guys, to be back in front of the camera. Uh, Flying season is almost over. Uh, we've probably got a few more uh, weekends to go. It's supposed to be 62 degrees tomorrow, so i uh, get some more flying in. Uh, but we're fortunate here in New England to be still flying at this time of the year. I don't think we were last year. Uh, anyways, I got a lot of uh, questions about this guy. I had taken some heat way, way back. I had put out a video about this versus the Align uh, T-Rex Dominator, which I had and I loved. Uh, it was basically a durability and flying type thing and everything. But uh, anyways, this is basically from the experience that I've had with it, kind of a little bit of a, I guess you'd say a talk up of it, uh, a little bit of talking about the, uh, the crashing of it because way back when we were really just kind of figuring what would and what wouldn't but now that I've had some time to play with this guy for a while I've really seen what you should really have as far as crash kits uh, and we'll talk a little bit about just the performance of it and my thoughts is, is after having flown it for this amount of time uh, well, let's get into the crashing of it, and then we'll get into the performance and some of the different things. Uh, now, as far as I've seen, and I've been trying to transition guys from big ear 3D to more of what I guess they call smack flying. I don't know where all these names come from. Uh, 3D is three-dimensional. I don't know where that ever played a part in <laughs> flying upside down and all that kind of stuff, but... From what I know, some people say smack flying is uh, smacking it around, low to the ground, foof, 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 that kind of stuff. Other people say it's doing very accurate things close to the ground. I don't know, but trying to make those transitions, we've put it in the ground a couple of times. Uh, so anyways, uh, let's get going. First of all, one of the, the, the first thing really to go on this thing in a crash is... I've wrecked uh, quite a few sets of blades. The blades are guaranteed to go. Uh, canopy is questionable. I've broken two of them. I've broken them beyond repair. Uh, I've gone back to these stock speed skids uh, for basically two reasons. The other ones uh, had um, the front part that went underneath here, uh, the black piece of plastic that hooked these, the skids on the front, would always break. If you just dropped it a couple of, of feet, it would, it would break. And they came out with the skid replacements, just the skids and not the whole kit, but they never came out with just that part, and that's really all you need. So, but I got tired of spending the money on those because those, you know, you have to buy the whole set just to get that one piece. But... The one real reason I don't think I would ever go back to those anyways is because these skids, with the other ones, the tail was like this, and the blades would hit in the grass and get, and get beat up, and now that I've got carbon blades, I don't want that. So it actually, these skids boosted up quite a bit, and the blades never hit the grass. So that's a plus. I think I'm sticking with these. It is a very cool design. I do like the way it looks. I mean, I don't like the fact it comes down on the frame and not skids, but I guess it's uh, it's got its, its ups and downs. It depends what you like, guys. But the, the advantage is it does boost it up in the back. It keeps you know, the blades out of the grass. And I've never broke a set yet, so they're pretty tough. Radius arms. Uh, the radius arms are these guys in here, which I will take that off uh, of the pod and I'll show you if you don't, for anybody that doesn't know, but those usually will bend and they can cause vibrations and trouble and they're hard to see. Sometimes they twist a lot, sometimes just a little. Uh, another thing is if you do a rebuild, definitely take a close, close look at the, uh, the blade 
grip arm set. Not the main blade grips, but the blade grip arm sets. These guys here, which I'll show you. Those tend to bend fairly easily. They bend this way, they bend inward, and if you rebuild this guy and you don't check those, and also they sometimes will spin a little bit on the screw, they'll move a little bit. Uh, I really wish the design was different. I don't like having to take the feathering shaft out to fix those. I wish they were like a line where the screw went from the outside in. Uh, that makes it a little bit of a, a headache, but usually the feathering shaft might have a slight, slight bend in it, uh, and you'd have to do it anyways. If you're using BK servos, the BK servos for this guy, they just they break very easily. I don't know if Bert designed them that way uh, to save everything else, uh, but the there's only the gears never strip. I've never stripped a set of gears. What happens is where the horn goes onto the spline that snaps off inside. So you've got to buy a $12 kit just to replace that one spline. So I've got like 10 sets of gears in that one gear I needed to replace. So if you're using BK servos, that's a given. I mean, a five foot drop off the ground will, will break those. So I don't know if they're defective. I don't know if he designed them that way. It does save a lot of other stuff, and it is only one piece to replace, so uh, I don't want to say they're defective. I'll just say that maybe they were designed that way. I don't know. Uh, and the only other thing that I had an issue with uh, in a crash, which was weird because nothing in the back got damaged, was the tail pitch slider, the little black wheel inside there that spins around has little nubs in it and one of those nubs had broke off and what happened was the, uh, the pitch, the actual uh, guide pin that goes into the, the uh, uh, pitch slider was falling in and out, okay, and that was causing the tail to freeze and unfreeze and we finally found that, so. Uh, as far as the booms, the booms actually uh, hold up pretty good. I haven't had one uh, disconnect yet. I've never seen one disconnect yet. It, but I've had them get beat up a little, uh, but not. I've only had one that really uh, broke and was beyond repair. But the booms are pretty strong. Frames are pretty strong. Uh, not a bad crasher, guys, for a goblin. I mean, really, I've, I've put this thing in pretty pretty hard a few times, and uh, it's been pretty, pretty tough. Um, another, another thing is that a, a lot of people complain about, I had issues with, is the gearing. Goblin drives Castle Creations nuts with that, and the pinions, and which pinion uh, do you use? and which pinion is the right one, and is it really the right one, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, the advice I got from Kyle Stacy was, he's a very nice guy to talk with. He's a, he's a very nice young man, uh, and very respectful. And the, the advice that I got from him, the best advice he could give me on pinions for goblins is, use a stock one to start out and see how it goes, and go from there. You know, don't go out and read forums and buy this pinion and that pinion based on that kind of stuff. So, start out with whatever the stock one is and go from there. Uh, and that also makes a difference if you're governor mode or not governor mode. So, uh, But other than that, the performance of this thing, guys, is phenomenal. The guys at the field wonder why my big helicopters always stay in the closet. I mean... Uh, Saab hit a home run with this helicopter because it is so big looking in the sky. It's so visual. You can fly it out big and not lose orientation of a little tiny black tail boom. It is so powerful. It is agile. It is just an awesome, awesome helicopter. And, you know, I fly this thing and rebuilt it and replaced a lot of stuff. I, on main bearing block bearings and this and that and I fly it so much and I love it and it definitely is uh, my favorite helicopter out of the 500, 570, 700 all the ones that I have 
I really do love it. <clears throat> and like Bert said in the video, it's a grab and go. Put it all in your one SAB bag with your batteries, transmitter, and go. And you don't have to lug 12 cell batteries and you know all that stuff. I, I just love it. I, I really enjoy it. So as far as the performance, it's an incredible, powerful, nasty, agile, awesome machine. So two thumbs up the Saab and uh, it really is pretty tough, guys. So let me get that off of the pod, guys, and let me show you some of this stuff that I was talking about for maybe some novice out there that don't know what these things are. Okay, this is the BK. This is the part I was talking about. And if you see the top there is where the spline goes into the servo horn, and that's what, what breaks, okay? Other than that, I've never stripped a gear, so like I said, I don't know. We're not going to say it's defective. We're going to just say that Bert probably uh, made it, designed it that way to save all the other the gears and all the other uh, parts of the head. Um, now, these are what I was talking about, the blade grips arms. These will bend inward. They will bend down. You really have to be careful after a crash and look them over. And the radius arm sets here. These tend to want to twist one way or the other, and they're hard to see, and that can really throw you off. Um, I've never broke the, the uh, black part of the radius arm there that goes on to the swash or any of the, the linkages going uh, to the uh, servos or anything. So there you go guys in a nutshell that's my uh, my take on this machine and I hope that this uh, video uh, helps you out. Thanks for watching.